Welcome back to the shop and to the channel, getting back to the restoration of the Craftsman drill press. The last thing that we need to do is get this motor cleaned up and make sure that there's nothing wrong with it. Once it's all cleaned up, I'll mount it to the motor plate and hang it on the drill press. There's a few other things I'll need to button up as well. I had originally thought that I was going to be replacing the bearings on the motor, but as it turns out, this doesn't use ball bearings. It uses just some uh, machined bronze bearings, and they look in pretty good shape, so I don't think I'm going to need to do anything more than to clean all this up.
original cover plate for this motor was missing. I believe it also housed the on-off switch for it. I didn't want to go that route for this, so what I just did is 3D printed a replacement cover plate to go on here, and I think it will suffice. I've got this old uh, wire and plug I salvaged off of an old power tool to give this a uh, test run. Uh, it sounds pretty good. I think I'm going to let it run here on the bench for a while and just make sure it doesn't get hot. the motor tested good so I can now attach it to this motor plate and then hang it off of the back of the drill press. Well, this is the piece that ended up accelerating the restoration of this drill press. You might recall from a previous video that I was missing the belt guard for this drill press. But when I was attending Arnfest this year out at the Illinois Railway Museum, one of the attendees at the flea market had this and gave it to me. Well, before I button this up completely, it had dawned on me that I never did a runout test on the spindle, so I removed the chuck and put a dial indicator on it. And I'm only getting a little less than two thousandths, maybe thou and a half runout. For a drill press, that's pretty good. I think that's acceptable. Um, I think the drill chuck itself might add a little bit to that, but that can be replaced later down the road if I feel it's necessary. Well that's it. It is done. Finished. Uh, I've completed everything on here that I wanted to. I did accomplish a few extra things off camera that I'll point out here. I wanted to protect these tables from rust, so I picked up a can of Boshield T9. It's kind of a oil wax that is a protectant, so I just need to spray it on here maybe once a year or so, and that should keep these tables looking great. I found a seller on eBay that was manufacturing these Craftsman Bearings reproduction stickers. Even though there's not Craftsman Bearings in it anymore, I wanted to kind of keep with the theme. I also found somebody through Instagram that makes reproduction model plates. And I was happy to be able to get one of these from him. It certainly looks a lot better than the original. The belt guard cover was also missing the hold down 
mechanism, latch, whatever you want to call it. Made this out of some threaded rod and I made this knurled knob on the lathe. Rather than having the power switch physically mounted on the back of the motor, I just used this inline one and then attached it to the side of the base. I also made this chuck release wedge. It just makes it easy to pop the chuck off of the spindle so you can either clean it, maintain it, replace it, or put some other chuck on the end of this. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed the series of videos of the restoration of this drill press. I estimate that this drill press is anywhere between 75 and 80 years old, and structurally, I think it's in phenomenal condition. I don't know for certain if this is the original motor that came on it, but it certainly looks like it. And the motor certainly dates to that same time frame. And although, in all honesty, I would much rather have a floor model drill press rather than a benchtop one, uh, I still enjoyed uh, this restoration. And I'll use this one until something else different comes along that may need some attention or a little love. As always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube analytics. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. My analytics tell me that only about 20% of the people that watch these videos are subscribers. If you're a subscriber, we're not going to send you anything. YouTube's not going to send you anything. But it certainly does tell their analytic engine that these are videos that people are watching. So... Please help the channel grow a little. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget the bell icon so you get notified when a new video is uploaded. And as always, thanks for watching.